Hello all, I hope you are doing well in these, ex well, they're still extraordinary times. Welcome to the Fintech Finance Virtual Arena where we're hosting you today. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about something that my YouTube algorithm is going to absolutely love. Uh, we're talking about benchmarking and sustainable banking. And we got a uh, hell of a panel to talk about this today. Uh, first of all, we have got Matthew from Mobiquity. How are you doing today, Matthew? Hi, I'm really good. Thanks. Great to be here talking with you again today. You're becoming, becoming a bit of a bit of a regular on the show. Well, I'm trying to do the circuit where I can. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and oh, you're in. I know you're in the UK. I want to say sorry, but I could be wrong. Very wrong. Cambridge here. I'm Peterborough. <laughs> Peterborough, Peterborough. Yeah, I don't know where sorry came from. Um, also joining us from a BBVA, we have Ricardo. Ricardo, how are you doing? How's how's Spain? Oh, very well, thank you. Very happy and greetings from Madrid. Excellent, excellent. God, I, I would very much like to be in Madrid right now. Uh, and uh, lastly, we have Chris from Novus. Chris, Chris, whereabouts in the world are you? So I, I'm based in London right now. Ah, uh, excellent. So you're having our nice uh, middle of the year, suddenly the heating turns on and all that. Yeah, I mean, it, it was 30 degrees last week, but now it's uh, you know, the usual. Excellent. excellent. Well, well, let's go uh, straight into it. Um, the first thing I very much want to want to touch on, and this is something that is often um, often a little bit overlooked. Um, Matthew, what what is sustainable banking? Because it gets thrown around the term consistently Let, but let's break that down a little bit what exactly is sustainable banking i'm going to quote our academic collaborator a gentleman called dr ben caldicott who's a leading authority uh, on sustainable finance at both the university of oxford and he's the cop 26 strategy advisor to the uk government cabinet office um, and he stated that uh, for a sustainable finance is a structural change in the demand and provision of financial products and services. It's also mission critical for tackling both environmental and social challenges facing humanity. Um, and as a result, and a shift in societal changes, um, banks of all sizes, both traditional, challenger, are pledging to make sustainability a key part of their environmental, social, and corporate governance strategy. So, you know, if we think about it in, in actual terms, Lloyds Bank Group is pledging to cut the amount of carbon emissions that they finance by more than 50% by 2030. Um, Citibank has pledged to invest a one trillion, I nearly said a million, a trillion dollars towards sustainable finance by 2030. And JP Morgan have gone even further, pledging you know, a whopping 2.5 trillion towards climate change over the next decade. And then if I throw in another big name, just to keep it fair, HSBC uh, lately announced that they're going to use recycled plastic for all of their cards as well. So we're seeing this shift towards sustainable finance in part from the banking community. Ricardo, as uh, as part of uh, well, not not just a big bank. I think BBVA was the first that really came out and said we are going to be a technology led bank. Do organisations such as such as yours and and other other fintechs have uh, a, a social responsibility, or should it kind of be more focused on the the larger, more more direct uh, when it comes to sustainability factories and such? Uh, industries? Well, uh, uh, social responsibility or sustainability, as you know, is about meeting the, the needs of the current uh, uh, generation without uh, sacrificing uh, the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So this is a super uh, um, complex concept. Uh, it's about promoting economic and social progress while respecting natural environment. So any company can uh, they can develop a, 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 a sustainable strategy. Uh, this concept belongs to all of us uh, because any company creates economic, environmental, and social value in the short, in the medium, and, and, and in, in the long term. Uh, so I feel this is a, 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 an important concept, but uh, it should be shared uh, by all the main actors uh, in the economic environment. Absolutely. Chris, did you want to weigh in on that in terms of kind of banks and fintechs of where their role is when it comes to the responsibility? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, speaking from from our perspective uh, of a fintech and sort of Gen Z and um, young millennials, 
I would say that sustainable banking goes beyond just uh, simply not funding businesses that are prioritizing profits over planet and environment, uh, but really go a step further and and really being the intelligent sort of uh, middleman in between the real economy um, and the financial um, economy that really teaches people about the power that they hold with every penny that they have and really how that can be used for more positive outcomes. Um, and, and if I want to, and if, and if I could add a few statistics, I think Matthew already mentioned a few ones uh, that are really striking for me in the UK market, for example, is that less than 2% of the total deposits are really deemed sustainable, uh, whereas we have around 50% of the people that want to be more conscious, that want to uh, associate with brands and do goods and have their money be put into good use. Um, so it's it's striking, and I believe that this gap would be closed, but more importantly, what needs to be done is the rest of the 50% of people need to think that sustainability is really um, the cool way forward and the intelligent way forward. And I think banks have a lot to play in that. That's quite a, um, a large potential market there. Um, I think t taking all, all morality off the, uh, off the table um, and just looking from sheer economics, that, that, that kind of sheer number of people, yeah, I, I want a slice of that pie. That's a big market that's kind of left uh, left uh, left untapped. Uh, Matthew, did you want to weigh in on this in terms of uh, where do banks and fintechs, where is their social responsibility? I think corporate social responsibility, you know, financial inclusion and sustainability is, is no longer a customer, uh, an issue that customers overlook and it's regarding to all industries or pertaining to all industries. You know. It's easier right now because we're talking about financial services and banking as a whole um, to talk explicitly on this, but it covers all industries. You know, We all have one planet, we all have to contribute towards that in some way. And Chris's points were really interesting a moment ago. If you just look at the, um, the economics of what's available to you, it's really interesting if you suddenly could see a lot more of those deposits um, that stacks up to a traditional ROI, ROI investment case. You know, there's more of a market here if we adapt. So I think it's you know, there are lots of elements where you can see that comes into place um, and which found that almost half, which I think backs up what Chris was saying, of UK customers believe it's important that their bank has a policy um, in place to reduce its carbon footprint. Um, you know, the role of the bank in society is changing. Banks and fintechs have a social obligation to their customers um, to, and by extension, the wider community. Um, and we've seen examples of that with the community banking model that's been set up um, in the last year, um, highlighting how banks who, cannot prov who provide services to those who don't have access to travel to the nearest town, for example, or a phenomenal scheme set up by HSBC, the No Fixed Address which I have to say you know, is a really impressive thing and, and sh you know, strikes a chord with the serving uh, the community with with access to finance with those who just don't have the uh, the elements that would have been a traditional barrier to getting uh, financial services. Absolutely. Now, one of the um, things that I suppose is, is um, not frustrating, but for want of a better word, I'm going to use the word frustrating. Um, about sustainability is when it does come to benchmarking and that's why things such as carbon footprint become such an important thing because it's a very singular figure that you can focus on um you guys uh matt at mobiquity you, you've recently launched a report uh, exploring sustainable banking uh the benchmark for sustainable banking it finds that less than a third of executives at traditional and challenger banks in the uk so less than a third of the people making the decisions say that sustainability should be a top priority in the boardroom. Why do we think that in the boardroom, particularly in the UK, uh, sustainability is not being prioritised? Uh, Matt, did you want to come to this first and then we'll go to, to yourself, Ricardo? Sure, I think so. We know now based on research that banks aren't doing enough to be sustainable. Um, but our research has shown that despite the fact that uh, our banking executives are willing to engage uh, and look at sustainability issues, under half aren't actually um, planning for it. So, you know, I think a lot of people are using COVID as a, as a reason or an excuse as to why. Um, this is a barrier to sustainability. The challenge, the challenge for us exists as to how can we reframe this as an opportunity for banks and financial institutions to solve business frictions by scaling sustainability initiatives. You know? So COVID has in fact resulted in a change in the way we work, bringing a variety of benefits um, when it comes to reductions in travel and remote working, um, reducing our climate footprint, 
and as companies leverage digital technologies to replace carbon emitting day to day activities. Uh, for banks to begin to harness the benefits of, of sustainable banking, um, awareness building is needed internally to communicate the far reaching environmental and operational benefits that go with this. Now, according to the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, the impact of the coronavirus pandemic delivered an estimated 10.7% reduction, uh, uh, sorry, reduction in carbon emissions in 2020, with total greenhouse gas emissions almost 50% lower than where they were in 1990, which was the baseline year for the UK's net zero target. Ricardo, could I go to yourself? Why, why do you think some of the what do you think some of the reasoning is for sustainability not being one of the top priorities that is discussed at, uh, at boardroom level? Um, I think that uh, we are living a, a real transition at this moment, a transition from so many concepts uh, uh, which were well-funded in the past, and now uh, the definitions are changing and we should be used to a new way of work. Um, uh, in particular, uh, uh, regarding sustainability, I, I think that uh, sustainability was defined in the past as something very close to uh, social responsibility. It was much more a, a moral, a moral uh, topic and something linked to the values of the company. And this is correct, but this is not enough. Huh? Um, in another institution, society was uh, close to a, a, a compliance program, something to be done, uh, 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 to be complied with. Uh, uh, but I think that now uh, uh, society is a different animal. This is about the strategy. Uh, 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 in our case, for example, society means a fundamental part of a strategy. Uh, the responsibility belongs to all of us, and, uh, and in particular, it's also about opportunities and business uh, and something to be addressed. Uh, so uh, my view is that uh, the, the, the correct uh, uh, way to incorporate sustainability in your company is about to incorporate uh, this trend in your, your own and internal processes. Uh, this, is, uh, 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 this is about transformation of companies uh, around sustainability. So, so um, uh, a deep uh, transformation problems should be carried on uh, to, to, to be successful. I'm so glad you said that because it's very easy to, to have a sustainable uh, policy. Um, but as you said, it's about implementing that within your internal processes. Because as soon as it's implemented, you're actually taking action um, as opposed to several uh, um, brands have been accused of greenwashing recently and that kind of is because it's all about shouting what you're doing as opposed to actually actioning it. Um, Chris, could I could I go to yourself um, and against that kind of backdrop of what of, of why perhaps in the boardroom it's not being discussed as much as it should? Um, what are the opportunities to get more on board? What are the ways for implementing these behaviours? Yeah, well, from from my perspective, um, and again, I also come from a finance background uh, before. Um, it's, it's really something that's, um, I guess, not on the top of the retail investors um, and unfortunately some of the bigger asset managers, um, although we're seeing shifts there. So the demands are not really focused on um, having uh, reports about the sustainability metrics of the company and the impact it's having uh, on society and planet, um, which, is, which is a pity because uh, we're at the same time seeing uh, a lot of positive trends coming there, uh, coming in that direction. And I believe that the first ones to really adopt these principles and really put them up in front um, next to their financial uh, reports uh, would be the ones to really um, benefit and, and sort of carve out their brand name as a responsible company that is not only prioritizing profits above planet and society. Absolutely, you've hit, hit the nail on, on the head there in terms of carving out that. Um, we, re we recently saw on Crowdcube, I do not have the stat to hand, but we recently saw on Crowdcube um, Climate, which is uh, um, all about sustainable investing and wealth investing. And I can't remember the exact stat, but they absolutely smashed it in terms of uh, the people supporting them. Again, showing that there's a market out there and showing that they have created that brand within there. Uh, Matthew, could I, could I get you to weigh in in terms of 
for those that are implementing the, these kind of behaviors, what, what are the, uh, the benefits they're experiencing? I think ultimately championing a sustainable future will enable banks and financial institutions to carve out new revenue streams and business opportunities, which I think Chris was, was alluding to as well. Um, as customers become more and uh, increasing, increasingly eco-conscious post the, the pandemic. Um, you know, our research report, uh, a benchmark for sustainable banking, shows that banks across the UK and Europe are, who are adopting sustainable practices are experiencing business benefits, including you know, improved cost savings, customer retention, growth, uh, as well as operational efficiencies, and really importantly, improved brand reputation, which has always been key to any any banking element. You know, and if you look, in fact, at between two and five, two and five, forty percent of UK banks reported cost savings and customer retention growth through harnessing sustainability initiatives. Um, more than two in five in German banks, so forty-one percent, uh, reported improved brand reputation and increased operational efficiency across the business through sustainable banking. And it was two in five, so forty-three percent of Dutch banks reported customer retain, increased customer retention and growth through harnessing sustainable initiatives. So you know, today we're seeing a shift in the market with customers being increasingly eco-conscious across all the industries um, and customers will navigate towards banks that align with their own values. So in 2020, we found that nearly 40% of customers would switch banks to a more sustainable alternative. So there is a clear desire for sustainable finance um, and banking among the public at the current time. I think there's also uh, a demand as well um... And this, it, it's, it's not also about, it's, it's about enabling the customers to show that they are thinking about this. I think Bonk um, set themselves uh, in the Netherlands had some success with their, their wooden card, uh, which was, again, at the time was like, wow, this is a little bit different. Um, Ricardo, I just, I just want to elaborate a little bit further. You, you were talking about implementing uh, uh, internal, internal processes to move towards more sustainable behaviors have there been what's been some of the results of that and have there been any um any unexpected benefits well um i fully agree with uh, matt's uh, comments i feel uh this is about uh to capture uh business opportunities and this is our focus right now uh in our case uh uh, we are mobile, We have a commitment to mobilize uh, around 100 billion euros up to uh, 2025 in green finance to fight against climate change and, and to also to promote, as we have presence in some emerging markets, to promote inclusive growth there. Um, but additionally, uh, I see the new uh, activities and new sectors uh, growing up. And I, and I see them uh, as an opportunity for expansion. Uh, for example, renewables or um, um, uh, electric vehicles. Uh, or, um, we are also working in uh, um, sustainable housing, sustainable mobility, uh, new technologies such as hydrogen, green hydrogen or batteries. So I feel uh, 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 what we are going to see is a transformation in the way we consume, in the way we produce, in the way we live. So uh, uh, banking will be a profitable business as we will uh, uh, um, participate in this uh, transformation uh, 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 in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fully manner. I, I feel that um, uh, the opportunities will be uh, uh, larger than the, the risk here. Um, I think that uh, um, uh, new uh, actors and players uh, will be uh, will we will, uh, will appear in in, the, in this uh, environment, and, and we are ready to capture the opportunities. So, uh, so um, uh, new sectors and, and new financing for those sectors will be uh, a key driver of this uh, whole uh, economic transformation. Chris, um, technology has been brought up. We've got to talk about technology now. Um, one of the things that uh, I know some of uh, Mepic Cruise research highlighted was the importance of, of digital technology, um, which again, you think of the amount of energy and process that would go into something as basic as cash management compared to digital payments. It's just absolute apples and oranges. Um, it allows you to be, well, to, to make choices and be a little bit more flexible. How are banks as a whole using technology to make some of their some of their operations uh, greener 
No, absolutely. That's that's a great question. Um, and again, the case with us is that we are fully digital by default. And um, obviously, the energy consumption is is a big topic. Uh, currently, we're undergoing our B Corp certification. So uh, um, it, 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 it was really vital for us um, to understand at all, at all points um, what is the energy consumption that we're utilizing, the data centers, are they using renewable energy as well, are they doing Doing anything to offset if so what can we do on our ends to offset that um, in addition um, but 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 actually also in in terms of the different initiatives uh, they don't just stop here uh, what we try to do is really embody um, this sort of mind uh, with everything that we do so for example we do have sort of an, an environmental management system where we uh, try to discuss with our partners what are the initiatives that they're taking on their end since we have a lot of tech partners also uh, within our stack although we try to um, uh, keep everything modular and uh, built from first principles so that it's adaptive to anything that we want to bring as a product um, but even um, beyond that we as a company uh, are also in a sense sharing uh, part of our um, some of our economics to really create uh, impact on environmental and social level on top of every all of that that I mentioned this far um, and obviously ensuring that people who join us um, are really uh, excited about our mission and are really trying to live up to these values and um, and if not really become um, um, as, 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 as they go along uh, with developing in Novus. Um, and that, that obviously includes a lot of, uh, for example, a whole week paid off that um, it can be used for uh, engaging in some social or environmental impact project on their uh, on their uh, from their choice um, and all these other initiatives that we try to do to make sure that um, we are not only greener but also socially engaged as a company highlighting the data centers there is is such an important part because you yeah. hear i mean i i, I did do a Google not that long ago, um, and it came up with kind of different figures of the amount of energy that's used for every kind of sort of search that is that is completed. Because again, a lot of data, a lot of data centers going through. Um, Matthew, can I can I go to yourself? I'm I know you guys work with a lot of banks, so how are banks using this technology to make their operations greener? What, what's been some of the um, well, some of some of what you've seen from your perspective? So through our research uh, across the UK and Europe, you know, we have identified this golden opportunity for banking and the finance industry to drive sustainability through leveraging these digital technologies that, that we've just talked about, including Chris. Um, and around three quarters of UK banks understood that digital technology um, can make their business greener. Um, what we found, I think, was a really interesting uh, proof point is actually um, energy from the data centers. When we go to digital, you know, we share across you know, various brands, Azure, uh, AWS, etc. There's a fantastic initiative um, in the Stockholm Data Parks, which is initiated by the city of Stockholm, um, where district heating and cooling provider Stockholm Energy um, actually get power from the heat from the data centers that's generated. So it, it shows you throughout the chain, if you start looking further and further, by leveraging certain elements and data centers are very power hungry by nature, you can actually take that and make it a positive, use the offset energy created, in this case heat, to power and cycle through, you know, for a, a city and energy providing to a city. So it's really fascinating the um, the opportunities that are there. Um, but we, you know, we realise now, and I think banks are starting to realise that digital needs to be viewed as part of their banking sustainable strategy. They're not two separate initiatives. They can actually be one and the same. Um, you know, it's at the heart of it, and banks can build awareness around the, their digital role in creating sustainable banking outcomes. Um, and we'll see that. Two in one, sorry, two in five banks are currently using intelligent automation and digitizing all their paper processes to be more sustainable. Um, some are helping customers be greener by encouraging less travel to the branch so they can complete you know, the customer journey through an app or, or online. Um, and others are working with suppliers and partners to extract the maximum value they can via machine learning and data center configuration. And, you know, and Mobiquity, we're calling this sustainable digitization sustainable digitization I, I, I like that because also the as as we move further on more and more digital capacity is going to be needed so of course you've got to kind of allocate for that at the same time precisely excellent um ricardo from from your perspective how how are banks as a whole using again digital technology to make their both internal and external operations uh, well greener greener 
Um, I think that sustainable finance transformation and digital transformation has, to be honest, are a win-win alliance. I do not understand one at this moment without the other. And I believe that digitizing sustainable finance can be a real game changer. It provides uh, an opportunity to reshape the whole finance uh, and more now than ever, uh, given the, the current uh, pandemic uh, uh, situation. Because uh, uh, the uh, digital transformation um, uh, amplifies the potential of the financial system. This is something, this is something we knew. Huh? Uh, we carry on before this uh, uh, system of financial uh, transformation, the digital form transformation at BBBA, and we learned uh, that uh, uh, we can access more clients through the digital uh, tools and the digital uh, uh, technology. Um, and to me, uh, uh, the digitizing uh, system of financial is the only way to access small and medium clients to support them in their own transition. Because sustainable finance is not just a concept for large corporations, oil and gas corporations, or high intensive corporations. This is also about the small players, individuals, families, and SMEs. And, and, and uh, I just don't believe that uh, to promote uh, sustainable finance around those small players uh, will require a new digital tools as well. And secondly, uh, uh, the enticing uh, uh, green finance, sustainable finance, uh, uh, will help us to, to create new products and based on data and based on new intelligence, for sure. Huh? Uh, the sustainable transition is also about data. Uh, we need, requires a new information. It's a new knowledge we should learn. Uh, we do not have internally, uh, at least at, in the financial um, institutions. So, and so, so uh, data and new data tools will be also a major part of the transition. Looking at those data tools, is there a, an opportunity for um, some sort of, again, carbon footprint is a great way to, to put data against it. Is there a simple way to kind of track and trace in terms of carbon footprint? footprint? Will that, will that uh, drive kind of customer engagement in these policies? Well, in, 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 uh, in our case, um, uh, I, I think that, yes, um, um, uh, data will be uh, something necessary uh, to engage with clients, to um, support them in the transition. And the, first, uh, the best way to, to start is uh, uh, ensure they understand their own carbon footprint. Uh, uh, at BBA, we have developed, for example, uh, digital tools uh, uh, for SMEs uh, uh, to carry on this exercise. They can track their own carbon footprint uh, based on their uh, uh, energy bills. Um, uh, we have, a, we have uh, launched uh, recently a new algorithm uh, for them to calculate in a very easy way and a smart way uh, their own carbon footprint. We provide them with new uh, uh, services and new uh, uh, products to he hedge or to manage their camp with footprint. And at the same time, we allow them to increase the, their business because in particular, in some uh, uh, um, uh, government and public tenders, uh, the carbon footprint for, uh, 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 for SMEs is a key aspect of the, of, of the, uh, of the exercise. So, so we are very happy with our, uh, uh, the current situation uh, and we consider ourselves a, a real enable for a small uh, uh, players and actors in this transition well, uh, to continue uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, improving the campus footprint and, and, and also to, to um, uh, support them in their own long-term strategy. Absolutely. Um... Matt, from 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 your perspective, what, what what will kind of drive the customer engagement in this sort of track and trace approach? So, if being realistic, all organisations have a responsibility to become greener and prioritise sustainability and societal issues um, around climate change. By doing so, <clears throat> excuse me, banks will stay your future fit as you know as they will align with an increasingly eco conscious customer base um, by bridging the digital and sustainability initiatives as part of their ESG strategy. 
you know, we're already seeing great examples of best practice in this um, with Microsoft Azure uh, enabling to come in and actually look at your current infrastructure set and demonstrate how they can offset uh, the carbon and port you across. Uh, I believe AWS are about to run the same thing. You know, and MasterCard have just come up with a carbon calculator for banks as well. So we're seeing lots of people tentatively stepping in and trying to demonstrate how they can help. And we need that push to go to the next side and, you know, and get to this sustainable digitization. Excellent. Um, Chris, can I, can I come to you now? Now, as a, um, as a bank of the future, um, how can you, again, really empower your customers to take stock, take action, take responsibility, um, but also how will this become uh, an integral fe feature as a, uh, as a bank of the future? Yes, absolutely. And I and I wanted to add um, on top of the last few points made in terms of driving uh, further customer engagement. I think it's it's not only about showing the customer their carbon footprint, footprint, but really going a step further and um, letting them know about solutions where they how can they discrete, decrease it, not simply by carbon offsetting, but really about changing their lifestyle um, and really adjusting to, um, you know, more sustainable um, lifestyle that is really creating that impact uh, directly and indirectly. Um, but um, in terms of the other features that, that I and uh, um, my team envisage to be really important um, in the future, obviously, um, Ricardo had um, uh, the great point of data and transparency that should be at the forefront. But uh, we believe that there is some further incentivization mechanisms that need to be in place um, um, that, that could drive further engagement. And that should not only come in terms of monetary value, but really in terms of providing um, a delightful experience that, that rewards the right behavior and that uh, really focuses on, on, on creating that feel good feeling for its members to feel more engaged with it and, and really think more positively. How can they be uh, more impactful with their finances and everything that has to do with them from how they're managed, invested, spent, um, and really providing that universe of options uh, that is tailored towards um, toward the company's vision, but also aligned with the values of the customers. Oh, I don't know, Chris. I, I, I like to stick my head in the sand. I, do, I don't want to know where people are investing. Go go nuts, you know, guns, biotech. I, I want to put my head... You've hit the absolute nail on the head. Customers want to be able to have that ability to be able to see where their, uh, well, where their money is being invested, where it's being saved, all, the, all, the, all, the, all those elements. Um, Ricardo, can I can I go to yourself? Um, as sort of like the the sort of final point I want to touch on is how how what well, will sustainability will it become an integral feature uh, go, it, going forward for the bank of the future? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, I think society will be a major part of any banking strategy in the future. I feel it will be a, will represent a fundamental part of the whole strategy because banking, uh, banking institutions we have understood our role and that of the financial sector which is key uh, we finance productive activities and we can really help our clients transition towards greener and fairer business models uh, and also we influence we have a, a strong influence on how uh, economic uh, environment uh, is uh, developing so um, uh, so for sure uh, uh, society uh, is, is is here to, to stay. Uh, um, as a financial entity, uh, we we have a direct impact. Uh, but uh, as we are a service companies, is quite a small. Uh, uh, I read that uh, uh, in the European Union, Union's financial services represent around one percent of uh, uh, total emissions uh, in the region. Uh, so uh, it is true we are not part of the problem, but we are part a bigger part of the solution uh, um, uh, because uh, uh, through the the, the the companies and the activities we finance uh, uh, this is this is a key point of of, of, of the whole uh, uh, strategy of any bank in the future uh, we should look for a positive impact in our uh, financial activities and uh, we are working on that we are working to develop a new business model new strategies to achieve that goal uh, trying to mobilize more funds to the uh, some specific sectors and activities, trying to also to, to, 
uh, um, uh, transform uh, our balance sheet. Uh, we are aligning uh, our balance sheet to some long-term scenarios, decarbonizing scenarios. Uh, 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 we can support that as well, the decarbonization of the full economy. We are working on, uh, as well, leading by the sample in our own uh, carbon footprint and, and, and transparency, uh, 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 which is key. Uh, uh, it was also mentioned that transparency uh, it will be a, a key driver as well of the strategy. We, we, we will should act in a very transparent way because the only way to promote uh, the whole transformation, this is a colossal task of the economy, uh, requires data and, and transparency of the main players here. Excellent, excellent. I think that there's definitely that, that's the tweet I can kind of see there in terms of the ability, the role the banks have got to play. Um, finally, Matthew, I, I want to come to yourself. Um, will sustainability become an integral part of, of, of the bank of the future? I think the answer is yes, straight, straight shooting. Uh, you know, the role of the bank in society is changing from a wealth repository to a digital lifestyle uh, enabler. Um, and if you look at Chris's point about carbon offsetting, I mean, it's not about carbon offsetting, it's the digitalization of the whole, oper of the whole operation and take advantage of the benefits that come from that. You know, the end to end, when we talked about the Stockholm example earlier, of the data centers powering, powering uh, towns and villages. You know, um, banks will need to embrace their responsibility as an essential part of society and the community in prioritizing financial inclusion, uh, climate change and societal issues to support that community that they're serving. Um, you know, we know that banks can use technology and as a former banker myself, it was part of my roles to see where the market goes and what technology we can do and apply to enable uh, our customers to move forward. Um, you know, we've seen in our report that um, we found awareness that using digital transformation to create a sustainable future in banking is high uh, requirement among the UK and Dutch banking executives. Um, and it highlights that opportunity for digital innovation to drive sustainable income. Um, or sorry, sustainable outcomes, not income. Uh, in the Netherlands, four out of five and 80% of the banking executives um, are aware that digital can have a positive contribution uh, to sustainable banking and therefore to society. So you know, we're seeing that the UK banks, the awareness is also high with just under three quarters of banking executives aware that digital has a positive role in sustainable outcomes. But in reality, as we move into this new era of sustainable banking, Sustainable digitalization or digitization will enable the banks to become part of an automated 360 degree uh, sustainable ecosystem. Um, well, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to, to speak with us all today. Um, very quickly, can I just get you all to say, where is the best place to reach out to you? Uh, Chris, where, where can we reach you? TikTok? <laughs> no, not really. Um... Yeah, you can you can find a lot about Novus on our website uh, www.novus.world, um, and hopefully you like what you see there. Um, as we're currently launching our live beta this week, so very soon we'll be available to more people in the UK. Excellent, excellent. And Ricardo, now BBVA, you do a fair few things. Where's best to find out more about some of the the work you're doing in sustainability? Well, we are we are doing our job and, and trying to transparent uh, our deliveries. In, uh, in particular, in our website, there is a specific uh, uh, um, piece of uh, information uh, regarding sustainability and responsible banking. Uh, you will find there our uh, sustainable policy, our uh, also our internal frameworks. Uh, you know, banking is also about uh, 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 rules, uh, procedures, and and controls, uh, you will you will uh, find the way we, we act, the way we work, and, and also our commitments and achievements and progress. So you will see also reports on, on targeting, on progress uh, regarding different topics around sustainability. Excellent. Uh, and Matthew, where can we uh, where can we find out more about yourself and uh, and get your report? So I'm available on LinkedIn, uh, as is Mobiquity. There's also our web address, mobiquity.com as well, where you can download the ESG report. Um, and we're happy to field any questions or queries um, that you'd like us to answer. Excellent. Thank you uh, very much, guys. Um, I will see you all soon.